So, <laughs> multiplying fractions. First rule for multiplying fraction, you know that A over B times C over D. John just said it. John, say it again. What do we do when you have fractions and you multiply, multiply you? Across. Yeah, you multiply across. Basically, you get A C over B D. Don't forget to write D because if you write restriction is correct. So, the restrictions are B can't be zero, uh, D can't be zero. We don't want B or D to be zero because then it will make the fraction undefined. So knowing this, let's do an example one. So this is pretty simple. Two over three times three over five. And of course, you could just multiply across and simplify later. But does anybody see what else we could do before we do all that? Brent? Cross reduce. Cross reduce, yeah. Uh, so that's a shortcut. When you cross, reduce, and things like that, you are really writing this as, right? What are you really doing when you do this? When you cross and cancel this way? Yeah. By? By dividing the numerator by three and denominator by three, two fifths, right? Uh, another way of thinking about this will be rewriting it this way. Isn't 2 over 3 times 3 over 5 same as 2 times 3 over 3 times 5? And what? I switch the order in which I multiply. What property am I using? So another way of writing, this is the normal way that, I mean, this is, a lot of people just do it this way. But uh, what about this right here? What am I doing? I am using what property? Yes, sir. Community property of multiplication. And could I rewrite this as now 2 over 5 times what, guys? I can now separate it again if I want to, right? This becomes 2 over 5 times 3 over 3, which is 1. Okay, so I kind of like this way better. I mean, this is kind of a shortcut. How, how, there's no property in algebra that says you could cross-cancel, you know what I mean? But um, that's a shortcut. Because there's no prop cross-cancel property or anything. Have we ever heard of that before? No, there's no algebraic property that says you could cross-cancel. But this is what's really going on. By the way, whenever you cross cancel, what what operation do you need in the middle? Multiplication, multiplication right? Cross kind of reminds you of multiplication. Not only can you do cross, right? Cross, right? Cross like multiplication. If you have addition, could you do this? Okay, please don't do that when you have addition, right? Yeah, that'd be wrong, really wrong. Okay, any question? We good? Pretty straightforward. So I kind of like this way better rather than this. So. Like it this way, how you you know write out the steps this way rather than this. So here this becomes one, right? This is kind of off the side. This is kind of a shortcut. I like the other way better. Anyway, any question? Okay, now the second rule then is this. You guys remember if I ha have a over b, the whole fraction to the n power. This means A over B times A over B times A over B. How many A over Bs are you multiplying? Uh, M of them, right? So therefore, you would end up getting how many A's on the numerators? Uh, M of them. And of course, you're going to get M B's on the denominator. And as you can see, I wrote down my restrictions as well. You've got to make sure that B is not equal to 0. Okay? Because if it is, then you have undefined fraction. So knowing this, do you think we're going to use this rule again for doing example 2 or something? You guessed it. So everybody go ahead and try and see what we get when I have x over 3, the quantity, squared. Okay. So I guess you could write it out, but we could just use the rule. Michael? Ah. Something to the first power is still equal to 1. 0 to the first power is 0. Oh, you mean something to the 0 power? Oh, yeah. yeah. Something to anything to the zero power is one except for zero, zero to the zero power, right? Okay. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, you got that mixed up. Anyway, so who could tell me what to do with this? What do I get? It's pretty simple. Mary? X squared over nine, because you're right. You get X squared over nine because this is really, I guess, if I was being careful and showing my work, 
you ask a question? So you could have written this as really x squared over 3 squared, isn't that right? And so you get x squared to the 9. Any question? I wrote 3. You're right. Should have been 2. So you get x squared over 9. It's pretty straightforward. Question? Yes. Hold on. Okay, let's look at example then uh, 3. So here's example 3. 12y over z cubed times z mm -hmm. over 15. So how would you go about simplifying or multiply this fraction? Really, ultimately, you will simplify. So anybody who know what to do? What does it mean when you have something like this? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you could cross cancel like, but I'm going to rewrite it this way. Why would I want to, is that okay, by the way? Is it okay to rewrite this as 12 over 15 times y over 1 times z over z to the third power? Is that okay? Yeah. Why is this a nice, good idea to do, by the way? You could actually cross cancel, yes, but why is it a good idea? One person see it? Two, three? Elise, what do you, what do you why? Is you. Yeah, so you can see that you know the numbers are together, all the y's are together, and z's are together, right? It's a little bit easier, a little bit more organized. By the way, so does anybody know what to do with 12 over 15? What goes into both 12 and 15? In other words, what's your GCF? Yes, Abby. Three. three. So what do I get if I divide top and bottom by three? Um, so you get four fifths four times uh, um, y over uh, y. Uh huh, and. Yeah, that's just why. Oh, You're right. Okay. And then? Um, okay. Is it going to be z squared or 1 over z squared? How many people think it's going to be z squared? Raise your hand. Oh, okay. How many people think it's going to be 1 over z squared? Yeah, okay. So I don't know why, but people like are used to z squared more than 1 over z squared. I know, I know. I, I, yeah. But a lot of, you're right. You, you were right. For, but then sometimes people forget that 1 over. Does that make a big difference if you forget 1 over? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Just, right? Because I think people are used to z squared rather than 1 over z squared, so they just kind of write down, oh, that sounds right, but you can't just, okay, you have, how many, you have more z's on the denominator, right? You can't just get rid of the 1 over. That's very different. Now, do I leave it this way, or should I simplify further here, Robert? Yeah, you can cross out the 1. I could, uh, yeah, or I could just multiply 4y times 1, which is just 4y. So tell me what to write. If the, uh, yeah, yeah. When you can, and then oh, did you guys remember to put down that restriction? Z can't be zero. Okay, all right. Um, so this time the z didn't go away, but looking at the very original one too, right? You had z on the denominator, so you got to make sure that you have to tell the reader this would only work if z isn't zero, because if it was, then you get uh, you get undefined fraction, fraction, right? Undefined expression. Okay, any question? So example four uh, is something like this. Now, do you think this kind of combines what we did last time? Okay, good. Some of you see, a di really? You see a difference in square? Oh, actually, actually, actually there is a difference of square, right? Not, it's not so apparent right now. Anybody see it? Raise your hand. So this is kind of combining what we did last time to what we did today. Yes, Yuri, what do you think? If you factor out the A and A to third power. Good. If you factor out the GCF of the denominator, A, then you end up getting A squared minus 25. So then that's difference of square. Okay, very good. <laughs> what about that trinomial? Do you think we should try to factor that trinomial out? Yeah, we should, right? So if we do that, so this is, like I said, combining what we learned last time to what we're learning today. So let's write that as this way. First of all, I wrote it as over one because really, right, this numerator is really over one. I want, since we're multiplying fractions, I want to write down the denominators as well. And as you can see, this factors as a times a squared minus 25. And notice this trinomial. Doesn't that trinomial factor as a plus five times a plus five? In other words, that trinomial happened to be a perfect square trinomial. 
perfect square. But I mean, if you didn't know, you could have just done it that way, right? How many ways are there to get a square? A n, a. How many ways are there to get 25? 1, 25, or 5, 5. Well, which one works here? 5 and 5, right? Now, what should I do next? Anybody? Am I done factoring? Am I? Yeah, so let's factor out the difference of square. You should all know by then that this becomes uh, a minus 5 times a plus 5. Let me see if I can delete that stuff. All right? Does that make sense? So you can cancel out the ones. Let me see. Erase these. Oh, I cancel. Okay, there you go. So we have a minus 5 times a plus 5. As you can see, we have a minus 5 on the numerator. You know what? Better yet. Okay, any questions so far? Are you okay here so far? So, do you guys see that I could... Do you see things cancel out here? What happens to with A minus 5 and A minus 5 on the top and bottom? Cancel out. Yeah, before I do that, I'm, I'm actually going to do this. Hold on. So, after we get this, uh, before I cancel things out, I don't like that kind of... Uh, shortcut because there's easy there's kind of easy there's a way you could make silly mistakes so I'm going to rewrite it this way a minus 5 over a minus 5 is that okay oh by the way where is that a it's 1 over a right so then notice it's all multiplication notice every uh, operation in between these binomials are multiplication these oh, actually this is not a binomial times what else could we have here? A plus 5 over A plus 5. So I want you to write this step, even though it may take a little long. Am I done? No. Uh, what am I left with? Oh, A plus 5 left on the numerator over what? 1. one. Do, why do you think I did it this way? Yeah, sir? Yeah, and when you write it this way, you can see things how things cancel out, right? When you rearrange it. I mean, even though it just takes couple of seconds, right? It'll, it'll help you to not make silly mistakes. Okay, so then you know that a minus 5 over a minus 5 is? One. What is it, Ben? Oh, what do I get when I do this? I get 1 over a times what? Yes. And because these two fractions, they cancel out to be 1, right? And so, what's my answer? Here, answer is simply a plus 5 over a. a. I'm done, right? No. 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 Okay, if you leave it this way, you'll maybe get half points. Why not? What have I forgotten? One, two, three, four. Jonathan? Justin, I mean? A cannot equal to zero. A cannot equal to zero. And then I'm done, right? No. Oh, really? You're right, I'm not done. Because if you write it this way, okay, yeah, just because you canceled out these things, you must remember, guys, you have to remember, you, we are simplifying this original expression, right? Just because some of these things canceled out, you can't forget about the restrictions that we had here. What do I get? This, then, what are other restrictions do I have? Michael? A can't be 5 or A can't be negative 5. How many restrictions do we have? And it makes sense because our original expression had how many factors in the denominator that includes the variable? Three. three. And so it makes sense that we have three what? Restrictions. Does that make sense? Okay. Any question there? Are we good? Okay. So uh, even though it takes a little long, don't do it like how I did it before. Don't cancel it like this. I want you to write it out this way and then uh, write this. Okay. Any question? So I get 4y over z cubed times 3z over 8y. Now it's combining the two rules that we learned today. Well, we already knew those rules, but the ones that we've shown you today. Because we have the one with the exponents, now we have multiplying fractions. So um, anybody know what to do first here? <laughs> 